is one who represents God. It doesn't carry any divine connotation or title. It simply means one who is representative. And the defin definition is given in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. It says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. Luke chapter 3, verse 38, Adam is a son of God. Exodus chapter 4, verse 22, Jacob is a son of God. John chapter 10, verse 33, Gods are defined as theos, those who represent God, who do God's work from Psalm 82, 6. Okay. Then you get the other term called God the Son. Look at the subtle distinguishing factor between the two. Son of God, which simply means one who represents God, does God's work, compared to God the Son, the second person of the Holy Trinity, which, was ne which is never mentioned of Jesus or for that matter of anyone else in the Bible. This was a term introduced much later in Christian history at the various councils in the 4th century. Council of um, Constantinople in particular in 381 AD. Okay, having established what the term Son of God means, which what means one who represents God, it's analogous to the term Prophet, Messiah, Son of God. They, they are what you would refer to as interchangeable titles. In the recently discovered Dead Sea Scrolls, th this has been proven. Son of God, Prophet, Messiah, these are all who do God's work, they are referred to that title. Okay, so Jesus in this context is a son of God, in that reference, as one who represents God. Oh, what a shame. I would have loved to have speak. Engagements. That's a real shame because I was just giving her some... Is it possible it's three, three minutes? Uh, okay, okay. You take this, this is the Quran. Sorry about that, thank you anyway. It would have been really nice to speak to you forever. Come back by again, 2.30 2 to 8.30 we're here every Saturday. Definitely will. Take care, God bless you, take care.